Okay, I'm just about finished with this leverage biomole, well, I hope. So, what again we are going to do in this file, this is a still from the April Fool's Day class, is we're going to fill in the IRRs on a different kind of debt and equity. Now, we did it very quickly um, in the uh, class, and this. Uh, IRR is not here now. The, there's a little bit of problem in that when we computed these uh, debt issues, for example, the subordinated debt, we essentially had quarterly compounding. We allowed, we put uh, a uh, uh, interest rate of 3%, which is the whatever, 12% divided by four quarters, Okay, now, or 2.5%, sorry, whatever that was, 10%. Um, and that gets compounded each quarter. If it, in reality, gets compounded each year, you'd have to take that number, raise it to the fourth power, I mean, uh, one divided by fourth power, subtract one and get a equivalent annual compounding if it's monthly compounding you'd have to kind of do the other go the other way so you know i which it wouldn't i don't think it would be monthly compounded but you you've got to be careful on the, the compounding okay so that's just an introduction and what i'm going to do is take let's take how about well let's do the first thing copy this whole thing and go to edit pay special as column width that's the w and then why don't we see this was on 80 percent so i'm gonna maybe this is too small for the video but whatever um i'm gonna then i'm just gonna copy some titles i'm gonna put at least the start period start this is start of period and end of period So this is going to be a video a little bit more, less conceptual, not a little bit, a whole bunch. Um, why don't we just copy these ones, okay, and we'll make a annual model. And this will just be our year. That was kind of silly to do that last thing. And then instead of copying absolutely uh, um, everything, let's go and get our um, PL statement. How about we'll, where's the PL? We'll get the PL and the cash flow statement and get all of that. And we're going to do the, all of that on an annual basis. And I'm just doing that before we compute the. Uh, ah, this was kind of silly. You know, we should do it after we compute the cash flow. But this is, this is, let's put equal year and just get the first um, year of our analysis and then just kind of add one i think i did that over to the side in my last video i remember i did that but here you can just to get it all across then you just put some if um, and you go to the range since we're not using some if s and i hope and I never put the year here. Shit. So that let's go up here and right underneath the column, put the year. Okay. And we get. And I'll I'll take the end of the year. It's possible now. This this should be this is like a fiscal year. So if you get really obsessed, oh no, well luckily this ended in December. If we would have changed the um, uh, uh, start date, which we could easily do, um, then then you would uh, you'd have a big problem. Let's leave it at this for now. So not a big problem. Uh, uh, let's put uh, some if. Okay, and we click on the entire year. 
oops, and press F4. And then you click on this one and press F4 a couple of times. And then you just go to the editor, which is in the PL. That's kind of what we started the PL with. And then you can uh, do this. Now, if you, there are two ways to deal with uh, Control D. Okay. If we would have on this one put, if it's, if this one, take this whole thing, if this one is not equal to zero, then do it. Otherwise, put two dots. That's kind of a long formula, but when you do it this way, you just copy it all the way down. Oops. And I must have. See, this shit. I know I pressed the F4 here. I swear I pressed the F4. This is a stupid bug in Excel. Bastards. Okay. So we come out. I bet you I did that. I bet. I know I make a lot of mistakes, but that one I don't think I did. So then we just. Now we just copy this to the right, control R. Uh oh. <sighs> what happened here? Oh, this was because we stopped our LBO model. Maybe I don't even like it that it didn't took away the zeros. Hmm. Because this, we shouldn't have that depreciation. We could have switched off. It's showing some good uh, errors here. The closing balances. Who cares about the net income should have gone to zero. This cash suite percent we have to fix still. Oh, shoot. All this. <sighs> This this stuff. Why don't I just fix the one here first? Okay, I'm not going to leave the video on for all that stuff. So in the standalone case, I think we should have multiplied that at least by the holding period. So at least that's a good one to kind of remember. And then we go to this one, and we kind of just have it for a, a nice little annual layout of our um, model. I think that's good enough to show you this cash sweep percent is not a cumulative one so that we have to adjust. But you know, why don't I, I'm going to do this. Control minus. Okay. Debt to Abby Daw is not really cumulative either so let's take that one out. We could use some if s there and I've been through that so I'm not going to go through that again. Okay. Now let's go and uh, uh, what did I have to fix? Oh, I wanted to fix the cash sweep percentage. Okay, I'm going to switch the. Uh, here's 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 my problem. Okay, where's our debt? To, first of all, our debt. Where's the debt to EBITDA? It's up here. We got it. We did a few things wrong here. This was a disaster in the class to, when I did it. Okay, 96 debt to EBITDA. Well, this should have been the, the debt, the, the EBITDA over the last four quarters, really. Okay, not the, and then this debt to EBITDA is going way down to zero. And then when it goes down, it should do this, so oh, shoot. And here's what I'm gonna do. This is kind of really horrible. That I'm gonna multiply by four. It's not because we know it's that's completely wrong. Uh, um, uh, the the uh, oh great. Okay, that uh, it's. Uh, I don't have a historic four quarters here. That's why I was worried about it. Oh, shit. Uh, and then this one, well, let's just go through this one. So if, let's pretend this was really high. What the hell? Okay. So, because we don't have any history, we're just going to put 100% cash sweep, that means. And that means that, and, and let's 
make this 200 okay so from 200 down to 5 it's 100 percent from 5 to 4 now what i should have done here is put match and then if we take this the from instead of the two last time i took the two it should be the from don't ask me why and then we take this one and press f4 and then whoops f4 and put a minus one okay oops ha huh. that one i just did a look up <laughs> oh, stupid match this one against only these no index yet this is going to be a match and index f4 comma minus one okay and that means oh shoot that means it's the top one so it's either one two or three and then it gave a goddamn na why did it give an na oh this if this is false so let's put let's m multiply this by one so then we i was dreading doing this damn thing okay and then we can put in a cash suite percent well if this is one then we use the index with the match. We put index. Of course, I named it wrong. I screwed up everything else. If there was a circular reference, the whole model would have broken. It really would have. I swear to God it would have. And then you put this in here. And press F4 and you put a comma. Okay, and we put this in. And then we press shift control five so that's our cash suite percentage oh it never went to zero fuck just a minute hmm oh this this i could have put zero here i think then it would have been fine okay well you could have put more uh, things there that's good enough i'm stopping with that one because i hate it so much it's not a good reason not to do it, is it? Okay, now let's do the easiest, the equity cash flow. Now let's say that we, if we're really doing this carefully, we make our outflow in this one. Well, no, I'm not going to do it. We could do it so carefully, we could say the average date is this date up here. We get it, but really the equity if you get any equity it's right going to be right in that <sighs> holding period so it's going to be kind of at the end of the period so let's let's put this and get the minus on the sources and uses of fund statement so let's go down here and find the minus on the equity that's the easiest one okay and then the plus shift control one the plus is just the dividends which are the last line on the cash flow statement okay shift control r now if we uh do that i hope i still have the other color there there's the dividends we get out it's pretty good put 54 and get 30 out if we use the irr we can put this XIRR and you just select this line and then you I'm gonna select the ending period down here because actually we need that first period anyway and then I'm gonna press the F4 to kind of lock it in okay 47% wow. if you can really get that there's probably something wrong with yours i shouldn't have said that. I mean, how, how in the hell can you get those kind of returns whatever <sighs> if we do it on the uh, uh annual case that's why i wanted to do the annual case here then we can put the irrs here and um well actually you know i have to uh do it here so we can 
put a minus I'm just gonna do it again I guess a minus on the same cash flow that's a one-time cash flow but no minus because we already minus it we don't want to minus a minus it and then we get our dividends which oops shouldn't have done that damn thing because uh, do all this work it probably no shoot I'm gonna have to uh, redo our this theory I kind of like that thing but let's put a zero um, well if it's zero then it equals zero that's pretty stupid oh great control R control D and then let's I guess we'll just take out some of these zeros maybe that's okay you know and when we do this um, uh, in the in the uh, generic macros this wasn't that bad I guess let's press this one and shift control D whoops it doesn't work with the damn thing on otherwise it would work it's my video that's on that doesn't allow it to work okay that's that's a better way to do it anyway so we have our dividends okay and a shift control set whoops shift control seven and then we can uh, copy those across and get our uh, IRR this is our cash flow equity uh, cash flow and then equity IRR. okay so let's put it equal IRR and that one see it's pretty different when we do it on an annual basis than on a quarterly basis because of the quarterly compounding now it's going to be different uh, when we when we try the next one uh, because let's do the subordinated debt so we're going to kind of go from junior to senior uh, now I when we do the senior I think I'm going to be controversial uh, there was a wonderful Alinda in the class she's really helped <laughs> it was great and she said no 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 in your senior don't include that commitment fee and all that other money they're making on the revolver and all that sorry Alinda I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in because I just want to see kind of how much extra you make when you have all the fees and stuff on the senior but on the sub debt um, we just put a minus and find the subordinated debt we issued and then we on this one the positive cash flows this is really really easy instead of being the dividends this is that total repayment of the sub debt and the reason it's so easy is because um, it all the interest is capitalized now you would think that the sub debt IRR it's kind of, you'd think oh let's just check the model to make sure the models working out, out okay and the sub debt IRR in theory should be the uh, interest rate we put on it but because of the quarterly compounding it's not going to be exactly that so we put equal what we can do is uh, copy this now what did I do okay hang on did I put a minus oh well yes look at that we gotta put our minuses as pluses this time okay and we get a little tiny bit higher now we can the the first thing to do is really so on this equity we can put our IRR on the equity right here that that's really the biggest number in the whole thing this number 
I mean, I I feel kind of bad putting it just as a regular little number over there by the by the uh, sources and uses statement. The subdebt we can do the same thing. Let's get that subdebt down here. Okay, and then let's we're going to get the senior debt now. If I put a lower margin in, okay. Whoops, I mean. Uh, higher cost in, then the equity's return is going down really fast. So we better be sure of the margin. If we put no synergies in, well, we, could, we got all the way down. Now, we can see what kind of, whoops, oh, it's very sensitive. Right there, equity's gone and negative. And then just right there is the break-even point for our sub debt. And then we keep going down and it's going negative. Now, what I should do on that one is also put the, uh, uh, we should put an if error, I guess. And when I do an if error, I wish it, it kind of would work like this. <laughs> this one of the stupid things I did before, which is make your own IRR function. Very good exercise, isn't that? Nothing you'd rather do in the whole world than just spend an afternoon making a Sunday afternoon making your own uh, IR function. Okay, so that what I did here was just put a false. If I made my own uh, 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 IR uh, calculation, I would just put a false instead of a num there because a number just screws up everything and then we have the seat now let's put the sub debt in our other one so we can take this time I hope I, I won't make the same mistake we'll take our LBO model. oh there's a nice little bird out there. Hmm. and then I have to put a minus on the repayment of subordinated debt hmm Okay, I'm even putting our stupid little shift control. What is this? Shift control seven. Is that? I think that's what I did. Shift control R. That works. I really am gonna have to revamp the. I promise to revamp the. Uh, um, uh, I promise to revamp the, uh, uh, whatever the shift control are. Okay. So we just use reg. Oh no. Why is it 5%? Now that's telling me something's wrong. Okay. That's telling me something is wrong. I've got to pause just a minute. Okay, I somehow messed up. I had to redo this whole thing. I lost my underlines again. Frustrating. But uh, they, uh, we put in uh, the equity cash flow and we get a this amount of equity and then when we did this on an annual basis it still after all that crap it gave up the, it came with the same amount now when i did a regular ir instead of the xirr and got it on a quarterly basis and simply multiplied it by four there's our check okay so i'm not sure you know if we we kind of have quarterly compounding on all of the debt and it might be better just to do a simple one now if I take the senior debt, that's a whole lot more, a little tougher. Now, the first thing, of course, we'll put a minus on the, the how about the, the, for the senior debt, let's be a little more careful. Let's put outflows at start. How about inflows? from fees and interest. Outflows from default, 
inflows from repayment, including repayments of default. And then we put the net uh, revolving credit facility cash flows. And then we can get a total cash flow. And then we can get an uh, uh, annual IRR and uh, uh, annual. Uh, let's just get a regular, how about, I'll call it the XIRR and an annual IRR. Okay, and for the cash flows at the start, let's put a minus on the uh, sources and uses just like we did before. Okay. And that's the existing ca uh, uh, cash flow. And this is the senior debt. Okay. I'm done with that one, right? Senior. Got that. Okay. Now the fees. Let's. And I think we put a. Well, you know. Yeah, we put a, a plus sign. We better make sure they're plus. But if we go up to the, I think we can get the fees from right here. Oh, shit, maybe not. No. Okay, we're going to have to get the, the first uh, upfront fee from here, I think. There's our debt fees. Okay. And then, uh, in the next year, our fees are, are in, we get an interest expense. Let's go to the profit and loss statement and get on that. We get a commitment fee plus an interest on our senior debt plus a revolving debt Uh, interest expense and I have to make absolutely sure and I must have put an equal sign instead of a plus now we have to make absolutely sure that we did include the and I don't see the interest on the defaulted debt sorry about that so wait whoops I'm sorry Maybe it is up here. So we have the commitment fees. I'm looking for two together, and I don't see it. So let's put a plus this. And so we would have had a little mistake on this if we didn't have the interest on the defaulted debt included. And remember, we had a discussion about that. Well, I had a discussion with myself. I don't know if you call that a discussion about that default interest rate could be higher okay so speaking of that let's find the defaulted debt so that's going to be a negative because we pretended we pay the all the, the everything out and we didn't pay anything and I needed to put a minus on that now we get all of our repayments let's put a minus and start collecting all of our repayments other than the, the uh, you know, the revolver. So let's take this one minus the, uh, come on, come on, come on, the, the repayments from the sweep minus, which was a big one in that case, minus the repayments from the defaulted debt. Okay, and then let's put a minus on the repayments of the uh, draw, and then minus a minus, so, I'm sorry, draws are going to be a minus, yes, so I think that's, that's right, and then our total cash flow is the sum okay now if this doesn't make kind of any sense at all 
if it's not higher than the interest rate in a situation where you've every the, everything's been paid out then you know you've got an error but we can at least uh, try to get it we better have no nothing after here and we get a big repayment of our defaulted debt so <sighs> hope if I copy this uh, equity IRR, which is really big, a negative number in this case, we get that. And that's about right. You get 5%. Not a bad interest rate, considering all the fees and all that stuff. That's what you get. And if we do a regular IRR, we just take this one, and you can press Shift Enter here, and Shift Control P, Shift Control P, sorry. And multiply it by four. Okay, so that's kind of the annual I IRR that's taking account of everything else. So now we can uh, put this here. I think I'm going to put our regular old. No, I'm not. Well, yes, I can't decide which one. Which one do you think we should use? I'm a little worried about. Uh, we 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 should also have an if error on that one. So let's put if error and put a uh, comma false, okay? And now we can put the final one, which is the, oh, fine. I'm talking if error and let's put a comma false on that one. Okay, oops, don't worry, it'll come. It'll come back. There it is. Okay. And now we're just, now we can really start to look at the break even point for senior debt. How low can the cash flow go uh, if we push these costs up? Oh, there were faults there. And you can see, uh oh, just, just what happens to the ROIC and everything else. And this, this is changing, I guess, because of the cash flow sweep and all that stuff. That's interesting. If I put it really low, really low. Now that says there's something wrong. So I'm going to go and check that. I'm going to switch the uh, computer off. And when I switch the computer off, I think we should do one more thing as well. Now, we have... Yeah. Ooh, I hate looking at that one. Okay, this is our annual. Okay, now uh, in, in addition to the annual, let's uh, now let's have a uh, shift F11, and let's make this a uh, quarterly and annual. I. We did this in the class, I know, but it was, I thought, a little confusing. And it's, I'm going to do it differently. I think this is a clearer way to do it, where we'd like to take these numbers up here, put take the quarterly numbers, get the annual numbers, and plop in both the quarterly and the annual numbers. And it might be a little bit trickier this time the formula is going to be a little more messy but it's i think it might be good keeping it on separate uh, sheets can you hear the background the mosques in the background maybe okay so i'm going to pause this and just uh, uh work on a couple of these things and then i think we got then we're going to make one little data table with the margins see how low the margins can go before we don't pay off all our debt and uh, uh, and it's uh, we can do this with the IR and PV, but works better with.